to the uh, June 26th planning board meeting. Uh, so we will all rise to uh, pledge allegiance to the public.
sure we should have a uh, public uh, hearing. Is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak on this? Not seeing any. Uh, we'll close that public hearing. Uh, any comments from the board? Rachel? Uh, the, I, mean, I think the only question I have is, um, is it talks about an accessory. Is that, I, I guess by mind, an accessory is usually something that's added on. Is there, in this case, simply going to be renovations to an existing building compl contemplated or, some, or an add-on in addition? And how does that reflect it in the proposed changes? Okay, so there's a couple of things to pull apart there. One, in terms of the, the terminology accessory, really in this context means it's accessory to the golf course. So you can't have the dwelling unless you have the golf course. So that's what we're really talking about when the zoning language says accessory. To your more specific questions about the request from Willowdale Golf Course, my understanding is that the unit is going to go in an existing, it'll be an add-on to an existing um, shed storage that building where they keep their golf courses now it's going to build a, a, a small dwelling above it. Uh, so accessories sort of has two meanings. Um, I have I have no objection to that use. Uh, if it is a, a national uh, practice, uh, sounds fine to me. I have no objection. My question was just regarding code enforcement um, and how um, they would uh, apply, whether or not it would be residential code that would apply to them or industrial. So no no real comments, just a question as to how it will be sort of enforced upon or the codes that will apply to it. So uh, sort of response to that is twofold. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be ultimately an amendment to the site. It is a non-residential site, so it will require a site plan amendment some degree, um, but then there will also be a full built-in permit application process and the code office will sort of review it. So in terms of what the exact, you know, will need to be sprinkled or what the separation standards are, I, I'm not prepared to answer that question, but we can find that out. Absolutely, and, that, and that's uh, answer enough, and it was really just food for thought to for us to think about that moving forward, so thank you. So I have no questions or problems with this. Okay. Um, I really don't have any problems with this either. Um, so I would, uh, I would suggest that we, we should take a vote on this. Or, or, okay. Can I have a motion? Yeah, I would move to recommend to the town council a favorable opinion of this uh, ordinance change. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Four. Okay. Received our main DDP 
a permit for Natural Resources Protection Act related to the uh, weapon impacts, as well as Army Corps review permit also. Interestingly, uh, and one of the things that Jay had uh, discussed way back when was uh, some past his historic permitting for the property and the site, which had been originally owned by the town. Uh, the town had gotten the permits for certain level of weapon impacts, and as it turned out, uh, subsequent to uh, our meeting here last with you, uh, determine what that number was, what had been impacted from the first building, the 64 square foot building, and where we were at today. And as it turned out, we have an additional weapon impact of about 720 square feet, and both the state and Army Corps have accepted the in lieu fee program uh, to compensate for that additional 720 square feet. So it's a little over $3,000 that the applicant will be paying towards that. Part of thing. So we provided the permits to staff. We have that now. The site plan pieces that uh, have been referenced by staff and would in current relate to some of the parking pieces. And we're here before you to uh, request uh, approval and acceptance of uh, a site that will have 32 parking spaces when the code provision is for 39 parking spaces. So uh, we have now put on the plan some future reserved spaces that in the event that the Code Enforcement Office concludes that some additional parking is needed, uh, we'd be able to provide that. And to a couple of questions from staff about uh, the stormwater management, we do have a little bioretention cell that uh, will be constructed now to serve the proposed development as is, and in the future if it needed to be expanded for the additional seven parking spaces, would be a pretty straightforward uh, expansion of that little space for the water quality treatment pieces of that. I'll note, uh, and you'll see in our correspondence with the staff, as to the parking piece, you have the code provisions, but it's interesting as well that the deed for the property as it was transferred from the town to uh, the previous owner, which was Glidden, and now the current owner, uh, did have a provision in it that uh, talked about the number of parking spaces, and they based it on the number of uh, employees, and they said one parking space for every one and a half employees on the site. So with 32 parking spaces, that basically, on that uh, comparison, results in 48 employees on the site, and we felt that that was probably far more than what will be actually seen on the site. So in the regard of the deed, at least relative to parking, that was a particular provision that was, uh, at a minimum, a, a basis of comparison for how we were arriving in our 32 spaces. Uh, we did note that the additional future spaces for the board to approve that would require a, a DEP action in the future. It'd be more than likely, and the DEP has already told me this, uh, simply an additional in lieu fee payment. They will take the money uh, without too much problem. So. That's where we stand. Uh, we believe we have a good project against a 12,000 square foot building addition with eight units. And uh, we're excited to hopefully get an approval tonight because the owner and their building contractor are very anxious to get going for our way through the summer. So, with that, I'll turn it back to the board. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sue, would you like to start? Um, I do agree with you. The main issue, the only issue really at this point is the parking, and I um, just want to make sure that I'm clear on the fact that the seven reserved spaces are going to be shown on the... Correct, they are shown. They are shown, I thought so. And um, we didn't address the stormwater capacity and treatment level with the actual layout of additional parking. I have a plan here that I can show you that does show how that would be expanded. As long as it's there, I don't yep. really need to see it. Um, the only other question I have is, is no, and this may be the staff, um, no five should be amended to state that unless otherwise approved by the planning board, no more than 120 square feet of each unit may be dedicated to users which exceed the town's parking requirements of one space per 1,000 square feet, which just simply means we can add staff to any of these units increasing your parking. And use. Right. Yeah, and, and as board members may recall, and it was some months ago, one of the principal issues was that really identified parking as an issue is there's a similar use in site, uh, uh, in town I should say, um, in which um, parking between the tenants has become an issue. It hasn't become an issue for the community, but it has for the tenants, and they've really tried to draw the town 
in, and we've really identified that this is a private matter, and you know, it's, you're not pouring out on the public streets, and so who parks where and when, that's really a, between your lease agreement, and so I want to just be very clear that that's noted on this plan, like it was on the other plan, although, you know, uh, that, so we have something to point to, so we can get that's really all that's about. And that's what I was looking for, is it to go into the record that anything that happens because of on-site parking needs of people who are renting these spaces is not the responsibility of the public town. Staff had recommended some uh, additional notes, which we have now added to the program. Okay. And staff is um, okay with that? Um, I don't know that we've seen them yet, but if we but will be will. happy to <laughs> okay. review them. Yes. Yeah. Fine. That's all I have. Thank you. I think you've uh, responded to the basic issue I had, and with the addition of those notes, uh, saying it's an internal matter, essentially, if the parking gets too crowded and the set-aside of some proposed parking, just in case, um, I'm, I'm fine with uh, what you've been doing. Thank you. So is the expansion of the bioretention cell, has that already been triggered? So that will be happening now? Like, because when you referenced it, it sounded like it was sort of like up in the air in question. Right? No, the, we have a basic cell that will be constructed for this first project. Then it could be expanded if the seven spaces get constructed. So we wouldn't expand it out. You know, it doesn't involve any impact for the cell because the cell is in the public area, which is good. Uh, but we'd have to dig out a little bit more ground area for the seven spaces if they were to happen. Okay, and so I'm just wondering how that communication happens with the staff as to when that trigger happens. So what? So a couple of things. Yep. One, in terms of this process, what we would need to see what the ordinance calls for, if the, if the plan board is comfortable going 32 spaces instead of 39, that we have a fully designed plan. So what we would look for in is... Uh, Mr. Bushy actually sent to us on Friday, I think it was, which staff hasn't had a time to review yet, a revised plan for should those additional seven spaces be built out, what the bioretention would look like. So we would go through a full process with our town engineer reviewing the bioretention cell, make sure that would function. How that actually gets triggered is if they have 32 parking spots and it does start to become an issue, there is parking on the town street, the ordinance. The, the code enforcement office has the authority to go into the property and say, okay, now you're having a parking problem, you need to add these seven spaces. Uh, so that's sort of how the ordinance, so that would be the trigger. If they start pouring out on the street or if we start getting calls and it's clear there's an issue. Super, and my last question is just uh, as far as long-term inspection and maintenance is concerned of the bioretention cells and other PMPs on site. We'll be completing that. I, is this? I think this site is 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 subject to, and I know this is outside of the purview of this, but it's subject to post construction, chapter four nineteen, correct? Okay. So, yeah. Could you just remind us who will be doing the, the, the long term inspection and maintenance then? Well, the owner would be responsible, and they'll have to hire someone to do that. And at this point in time, I couldn't commit to do that personally. Right, so we'll take it as it comes. Then. Thank you. I'm all set. Okay. Uh, anybody have any other questions? Rachel? Okay, I have a motion um, for this. Um, without any objections. Um, having reviewed the evidence provided in the application, I move to approve the application of Hugo Properties LLC for, an addition, for the addition at 15 Washington Avenue with the condition that the plans be revised to address the comments and staff and peer review memos. Final re review and approval of the revised plan may be considered by the planning department. Second. Okay. All those in favor?
vegan by now. <laughs> okay. Let's see, number six. Item number six. Contour Properties LLC requests an amended site plan review of 8 Science Park Road. Assessors map R77, Block 3B. <coughs> Thank you. Good evening. I'm Mike Tatum Whelan, Terranized Consultants, here on behalf of Contour Properties uh, for the amended site plan application for <coughs> Lot 2 on of the Science Park Subdivision, located at 8 Science Park Road. Uh, we were here before you last month just to give you a quick recap. This is the former Foundation for Blood Research Building. Uh, the owner and applicant plans to expand it within its existing footprint. It'll go from about 25 or 26,000 square feet inside to 33,000, and the parking will be expanded from 44 to 107 spaces. Um, so I'm just going to touch on sort of what has changed since the last time uh, we were before you. Uh, primarily on the plan, uh, the parking layout has changed slightly. You'll recall there was the, the, the parking bay closest to the, the entrance feature the dead end configuration. Um, we actually showed you a concept of how we might um, fix that uh, at the meeting last month. Uh, we've since finalized the design and included that in a revised plan set. Um, additionally, the project sign that was previously shown on the plane has been removed. The recall there was, it, it was outside of the setback. The applicant does intend to come back and amend the overall subdivision, and at that point the sign will be added back. As far as this application, there is no sign. Uh, the other thing we looked at was stormwater management. Um, there was discussion um, amongst board members on uh, increases in peak flow from the site. Uh, the stormwater system was designed to meet uh, chapter DEP Chapter 500 general standard, which is related to stormwater quality. Uh, but peak flows are being increased across the property line to the, the wetland system, which ultimately drains to the Mount Central River. And we, so we have studied uh, the system and looked for ways to reduce that increase in peak flow. And, and we've come up with a couple different, um, couple different means to do that. Um, there, there was limited area on the site for retention. Um, and grades on the site also sort of limit a, a pond that has significant depth for, for retention. So, what we're attempting to do is more of a low impact development or, or handle stormwater close to where it's uh, generated rather than sending it all to, to a pond. Um, so one of the uh, one of the means we're proposing is to add a drip edge to the the smaller garage building on the site, um, which will would be stone to two feet deep approximately, um, and that will that'll eliminate runoff from that roof area, from that sloped roof area, and infiltrate into the ground. Soils on site are, are generally um, sandy loams, so, uh, so we feel that uh, we, we can do a little part there. The other thing we looked at is um, increasing the, the depth of the soil filter that the soil filter um, located at the front of the site was designed for a water quality volume, which is an inch of runoff off impervious areas and about four tenths of an inch off landscaped areas. We're going to increase that volume as much as possible, which is, is not a lot because again we're limited by by grades. Um, and then in addition to that, we'll modify the outlet control structure. And based on our um, based on our calculations, we think we can get uh, peak flows 
down. Pre previously, it was proposed that peak flows would be increasing between about 22% to 32% from the two-year storm to the 25-year storm. We think we can get those down to an increase in, from, in the two-year storm of about 5% and in the 25-year storm of 18%. Now that, the numbers that you've seen so far, the numbers that I just gave you, include uh, the, the 15 reserved parking spaces. Uh, you'll recall this site requires by ordinance 122 parking spaces. We're proposing 107 uh, with the remaining 15 held in reserve. So the stormwater system was designed uh, to accommodate those extra 15 spaces. Without those 15 spaces, the increases in peak flow are close to zero for the 2 and 10 year storm and about 7% in the 25 year storm uh, with the changes that I talked about. Additionally, for, uh, for the stormwater system, we have added some riprap aprons at the downstream end of the culverts that cross Science Park Road. Uh, while that won't reduce peak flows, it will prevent uh, erosion sedimentation into the, the weapon. The other, the other item of discussion last month was on architecture. Um, so we have provided a narrative from the architect as well as some updated renderings. Uh, we tried our hardest to get our hands on a sample of the metal, insulated metal panel. Um, unfortunately, without success. I do have um, catalogs. I can share colors um, with the board if that's okay. I can do this up. So you'll see um, in the, the new renderings we provided, uh, the two sort of major structures of the building, there's the sort of the, the rectangular structure on the left in the, in the rendering, and then on the right there's the sloped roof um, portion of the building. They're going to be different colors. We heard that the board favors from the variation in color. So the, one will be a darker gray than the other, and the windows will features of a, car a charcoal uh, trim around it. The, the panels will be sort of vertically oriented, which again I hope, hope shows in those renderings. Um, I do apologize for not having the sample, but uh, apparently just wasn't available from the suppliers. So um, I'm happy to answer more detailed questions, but I think those were the, the items that, that were discussed mostly. Considering those peak flows, uh, it's a really great job to see it go from 22 to 32 percent down to zero to seven percent without the 15 reserve spaces. It's very much appreciated. Um, the only other question I have is um, again regarding long-term inspection and maintenance of the BMPs. Could you speak to that and whether or not a maintenance agreement will be in place? Sure. So again, the the owner, the applicant will will own this. They also own the Science Park Road as well as the other lots in the subdivision with the exception of the, the site next door. Um, so they'll be responsible for maintenance. They have submitted a, a, maintenance, um, a maintenance plan. So uh, similar to the previous applicant, no one, no one has been uh, engaged to, to carry that out. There will be their responsibility. The other thing I'll mention, this, this site will be part of uh, a stormwater permit in the very near future, so and that maintenance piece will be enforced by DEP as well, and it will be subject to the, the town's post-development uh, stormwater uh, permits. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, work that you've done on the, um, the 
variation of the color of the, the building. Our, our standards do ask when there are such large buildings that there be some variation in color or design to break up what could be basically a very large box. I appreciate that and I think you've done some, some good work there. I have one other question and that is uh, the plans um, find at C30. The sheet C30 to show an area that's called um, an outdoor gathering area. Uh, and on the next one, L10, uh, you've got a bunch of plants planted in there, um, taking up most of the gathering area. Is it still a gathering area? Or it is, yeah. So, so there are plants uh, proposed, shrubs proposed in sort of a semicircular area. It's envisioned that there'll be a picnic table or two there for, really for, for folks to eat lunch outdoors, that sort of thing. It's more of an informal area for people to get outside. That's all the questions I have. Thank you. Okay. Sue, do you have any questions? No, I just want to say that at the end of our last meeting, I wasn't sure that it was clear what we were really concerned about with the length of day and things were really confusing. But I think you understood what we were looking for quite clearly. I really appreciate the changes to the um, architecture. It's not all that extreme, but it makes a difference. So thank you very much for all the questions. Um, I just have one question on, on the existing structure. Are you re replacing the panels in the uh, triangular? Are those being replaced as well? Yeah. Just talking about this area? No. To you. Yeah, that area. This? Yeah. yeah that's so the existing, right? That's, yes, this is a photo of the existing building. It's it's currently pine clapper. Yeah. That'll all be removed and, and it'll be sided with the insulated metal panels. I, I think it looks really good. And I'm uh, yeah, very pleased with the, you know, the whole layout and everything. So I'm uh, looking forward to the rest of the build out of all that property. It's going to be a great addition to, to uh, the town. Uh, so I have a motion, unless there's any objections.
part two, if you will, of the uh, gateway commons or, or uh, the gateway development. One side being the gateway shops, which is principally where Cabela's and the other retail restaurant shops are. And this has always been, had been, referred to as the gateway square side of the development, where office development had been considered and other type of um, uses. As part of the most recent Eighth Amendment Contract Zone Amendment that was approved, uh, the Council enabled the development of 288 uh, apartments or dwelling units on site. And uh, again, going back to the February review, the Board conducted a preliminary review of the site plan subdivision components and forwarded that along to Council. Council has subsequently adopted that Eighth Amendment Contract Zone, and so now the applicant is back before the Board for final review and approval of uh, site, plan site plan and subdivision amendment. Predominantly, it's going to be our site plan review standards that really govern our review process, but it's important to note that this is part of a subdivision because that original gateway development, which included both of this property, is part of that overall development scheme. And that um, really lends to sort of staff's sort of main element of uh, existing comments which really has to do with understanding some of the, the broader impacts since the, the original development went in. Uh, we talked about this back in February. Uh, we've asked the applicants to do a little bit further investigation about some flooding that we've been experiencing on Payne Road in the last eight or 10 years since the development went in and really trying to understand what the cause of that is. And so that's a process um, that our town engineer has been working with the applicants team on uh, really trying to uncover and still still underway. Um, some of the other issues that uh, were also identified, um, the board had requested that the applicant uh, conduct a, a, a redelineation of the wetlands, and it was actually identified that there are some additional wetland impacts that are going to be occurring as part of the process. Um, the applicant is still working through their state and federal permitting on those issues as well. Um, Again, uh, let's see, so in addition to those comments, you'll have received staff's uh, broader memo as well as a memo from Phil Bray, who is a uh, traffic peer review engineer on the application, as well as Woodard and Kurt. Um, with that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it over to you. So I do see a question at the end, Mr. Chair. Yes, yes. Um, just clarifying for me, we're looking at subdivision provisions, and we're looking at site plan so when, ultimately, when the board feels comfortable, it would be a subdivision amendment. That will be one action that you take, and then there will also be a site plan approval. Um, okay, but what if, if, mm -hmm. I'm a little confused. The final plan, site plan review, subdivision review, mm -hmm. is there a final acceptance that goes in on these as well? There will be a final group. Okay. That there's though, only one act. Well, two actions. This isn't so. Let, let, I me, think, just, let me just read what it says yeah. under number seven. Final requesting final subdivision and amended final subdivision. Number seven. Number seven. Uh, number seven. Uh, and amended site plan review. So is that what we're doing? That's what we're being requested to do is a final subdivision approval and an amended site plan review. I think those the verbiage got. There. Okay. Um, so the that's subdivision review. amendment and final site plan review. Okay. That's why I was at the mm -hmm. Okay. So now go ahead. Continue. Yeah. Okay. That's what I have. That's what I have. Okay. It doesn't very talk of our notes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I'm Will Conway from Sodego Technics. And I'm going to honor Jay's uh, request to keep the presentation brief and sort of adhere to the expectation that uh, any staff peer review memos, uh, which are not just Discussed or raised by either party will be considered agreed upon and will be addressed accordingly without the need for further deliberation. 
I did speak with Jay about that. He said we're very close. Uh, we have a meeting with Jay and with Angela tomorrow, um, at which time I think we can uh, resolve those. So we're here tonight to hear from the board. Uh, was, we uh, had your uh, reaction to our preliminary plan, uh, which was approved in February. We modified the plans and we submitted them. So that's what we're here uh, primarily tonight is to uh, to listen to any comments the board may have on the final. Okay. Sue? Yeah, okay, so taking the subdivision um, request for final subdivision amendment. Jane discussed the uh, pain rule drainage and the vets in process. Right? You didn't mention the traffic signal coordination. That is in process as well. It was one of those Yep. I don't want to bring it up in terms of having to have an hour long conversation about it, but it is listed here as something that is a concern. Yeah, so one of the things that was identified in the applicant's materials is that the uh, systems or hardware seems to be in place, but it's inoperable. Um, and this was one of the conditions of the original subdivision approval that the coordination between the Payne Road intersection and the intersection, uh, the, the signal at the in entrance to either side of the gateway um, be, be coordinated and modified accordingly. So that will, have, so that, will happen automatically. That, that will happen as part of this process. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, on to the site plan revision comments. Again, we don't want to have to go into great detail with them, but I just think that we ought to touch, at least put, you know, formally put them out there. Um, internal vehicular circulation. Um, the designer, should, the designer should revisit the intersection, etc. This has been taken a look, has been looked at, has it? Uh, we're going to discuss it tomorrow. That's going to be discussed tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Um, the infrastructure elements, the, the site, um, site utilization, the necessary infrastructure elements associated with each phase, in other words, we need to know more about how it's actually going to be phased, is that right, Jay? Yeah. That Really, the question there was that the phasing plan shows the pond work being done in a phase three, and typically we anticipate stormwater facilities going in with the first phase. So I think it's really a re refinement of my. Uh, yeah, let me add to Jay's comment. So uh, what we did is we showed the phases of the building construction, okay. and it wasn't specific to the site. We know we have to, you know, do the work around that pond in phase one. Okay. Um, and we'll be clarifying that uh, with the staff. As it seems to me, since I know that you folks are meeting tomorrow, it really isn't an awful lot that we're going to be able to do tonight, except that what I'm doing now, which is just take these and put them out there properly, is the areas that, as at the time this was written, were still unresolved. Okay, and then you folks will resolve tomorrow. And then you have to come back again. Yes. Okay. All right, so the next one is parking areas. Um, I was a little concerned as I was looking at it too about the sto snow storage. This is going to be discussed tomorrow as well. Yes. It has not been resolved. Are you? Yeah. Uh, not the JSA. Not the JSA. We'll that's it's why close. we. That's why we pay. Okay. And um, the maintenance manual, of course. Pedestrian ways and alternative transportation. Um, the transit provisions. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward as to what we're looking for there. Landscape buffering and green space. The, the revised wetland delineation conducted in 2017 identified an additional 5,825 5, no, square feet of proposed wetland fill. So whether or not this has been calculated as part of the state and federal permitting? The answer to that is yes. It has, okay. Yeah. And, um, I think the last one is pretty self-explanatory. Showing us a sample operation of the maintenance plan from East Lime Connecticut is not going to look too great on our uh, uh, plan, so that will be changed. And then I'm not going to cover the storm, stormwater management. I'm going to leave that to our stormwater management expert just to see whether or not there was anything in here that stood out as being more important than anything else. I think that basically where we are is on down to the little dotting I's and crossing T's. I don't think there's anything huge in here. I was very concerned about the traffic, like the light of the traffic infrastructure stuff. But knowing that this is going to be have to happen, 
makes me feel much better. And I don't, other than that, I don't have any real serious issues with where they are. Uh, I have uh, I have a question that I noted, and in your plan here, you say pet waste of the dog park will be collected by the dog owners, uh, and if there are any issues, there will be doggy DNA testing, which your waste is properly cared for. Uh, I'm not sure I really want to find out how that's done, but. Um, I am concerned because a uh, dog park does generate a lot of a lot of waste, and that would come under the solid waste management uh, provisions. So I would, at some point, if you've got an operating manual or an owner's manual, like to see a little more about how that's going to be handled and how pet owners are going to be responsible. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Becky. Um, so I, I tend to agree with Ms. Aglis in that um, I think we're not quite there yet. I mean, we're close, but we may end up seeing you again. Um, in that, not only is you know is the East Line Connecticut O&M plan in there, but you know the lighting plan also says Scarborough, New York. So um, I would request that, and, and because you. you, you You've really done a great job to look at wetland impacts. I would, I would like to request too that the hydrocab model maybe get submitted. And I know that you've got outputs here for us, but maybe if, if the hydrocab model could potentially be looked at by either staff or peer reviewed, I, I would really appreciate that to make sure that all of these important um, uh, new aspects have been taken into account there. Um, just because of the flooding issues on Payne Road, and, and I think this is an area that we really have to pay very close attention to. Um, in, in particular, I guess I'm, I'm also wondering about, let's see, how, how um, could, could you tell me how the flight standards will be met on site to satisfy Chapter 500 requirements? What, what, um, it will be within the uh, central uh, detention pond. pond. Okay, yeah. so the pond is basically being used for both the general standards and the flooding standards. Correct. That's by both. And um, how will, I guess, the discharge from that wet pond, is it internally draining or is there emergency overflow? There is an emergency overflow. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, I guess, in, in what part, we're in the Willowdale Brook watershed, do you know? I don't know. Okay. I just, I'm not a civil engineer, so I, oh, okay. I didn't do that study, so I, I don't know. I'm just wondering how those wet ponds, once we, once we trigger that emergency overflow condition, how those might be controlled, kind of thing. Did you have a point? Uh, no. Okay. I would point that Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> So, what is the? Do you happen to know what the what the peak flow impacts are? Is it is it does the peak flow equal from pre-construction equal post-construction? I don't know the answer to that either. Okay. I do know that your peer review or what are the coverages review the hydropad model and all of the numbers you're asking me about. The outputs, but, yeah. but not the model itself. There's a little bit of difference there, kind of thing. So I would like the model. They have TR55 and HydroCAD. It would be good for them okay. to take a look. Um, that's, that's, you know, uh, the other question that I have, believe it or not, is regarding affordable housing and whether or not there has been affordable housing set-asides and, and like here. And if this is outside of the scope of tonight's sort of review, let me know that. Well, uh, I would say it is outside the plan board review, but for the benefit of the public, because it is part of the contract zone process, I might actually ask Ms. Martin, if she's no, not 100% comfortable maybe answering it either. But there was, as part of the contract zone amendment, there was a substantial payment um, towards the town's affordable housing um, uh, funding resource, if you will. So that was quite a bit of discussion through the contract zone process with the council. Um, rather than building the units into this development, per se, there was a um, 
my last question is just where are the silk socks going to be placed on site? I saw that with respect to Woodard and Curran's comment. They, they asked for um, sediment protection to be provided on site uh, during construction. Yeah, I think what they're referring, the answer to that is they're referring to our existing catch basin okay. on site, that we, that's where they will be provided. Okay. During construction. If that was for inlet protection, do, we, do you happen to know if it was for inlet protection? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and we feel like silt socks will be enough? It's, yeah, it's the silt socks. <laughs> I recognize you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's the silt sacks that, that go in, inside the catch basins um, is what we're referring to. And there is a lot of existing catch basins. Basically, the infrastructure is in place. It's just it's an optimal. So there's a lot already there that is why they were common. Yeah. And I would just recommend, too, that if you find that the silt sacks are, are silting up, maybe uh, just hay bales around the catch basin. Like sure. Kind of thing. Give you the same approach, but they're a little low tech and a little cheaper too. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well yeah. I I apologize. I did have a couple of other little questions here. Uh, under the recreation area, the event area, um, sometimes it's difficult to read these plans and like. Magnifying glass doesn't always work. Uh, I noticed that you've got that as stabilized turf, but there is a walkway leading up and around the back of it. What's that walkway constructed of? It's the same construction, uh, stabilized turf. In that, so what that leads from the uh, the fire lane patio, it goes down gradient to this uh, level area behind the pool. Okay. It, it, it appears to show an actual physical concrete or some, some yes. sort of arrangement. Yeah, the purpose for that is in the summertime, it's envisioned that events could occur there, for example, weddings, etc. So, yeah, ADA uh, pathway is provided for that purpose. Okay. Uh, and I noticed that you've changed from building names to building numbers. That was as a result of meeting with the uh, dispatch, that the, the names of three, we liked it from a marketing and a personalizing the project standpoint, but it wasn't good from a 911 perspective. So we've added now street names and changed the names of the buildings to something more. 911 friendly. <laughs> Okay, I, I was thinking it was probably along that way, but I, I did. I like the names too, uh, but that's that's fine. I, the, thank you. Now I'm done. You're welcome. Thank you. um, just kind of curious, uh, the, the facility you have down in Connecticut. Do you have numbers or names on the building? You know, numbers. Numbers. Okay. I I just think large complexes like this tend to have numbers, uh, just to make it easy for people to find out where they're supposed to be going. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just have a. Uh, just a few questions, uh, more or less clarifications. I was kind of curious on the signals. Who's actually responsible for that? Well, it was a condition of the original subdivision approval. Um, so at this point, we're having a conversation with, with the ethnic forest. But, but it could bring in the uh, person who owns the whole I think, I think that's part of the investigation we want to go through is understand what the scope of the work requires. Is. Would that ultimately be the state that controls that? Uh, it's a bit of, bit of both. Uh, it is. It is part of. It is it was part of the DOT permit, uh, Department of Transportation permit, but that permit was also folded in as part of the local permit. Uh, so it would be okay. both of us would have a bite at that apple, so to speak. Um, the, the other comment um, regarding the snow storage, and you, you know, you're using uh, uh, Hamden. Uh, hand is it Hamden? Slide. Oh, he's fine. As, as a uh, reference point, and um, I, I, you probably know that you can't really get it to because the snow, the snow uh, accumulation, and everything here is much different than southern Connecticut. Yeah, and that plan wasn't uh, specific enough for Jay, so yeah. we know we've got some work to do. Okay, work. good. And I assume that uh, also you guys are going to take care of the uh, the fire department's concern regarding. Uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the. You know, that one intersection that's okay. Yeah. And oh, one other thing. Um, in your experience, uh, this is regarding the um, public transportation. Just kind of curious in your experience with a facility such as this. 
Do you find many residents using public transportation? Highly unlikely. Uh, these are going to be um, more than likely young professional couples, uh, very few children um, that will not be um, prone to use mass transit. It, you know, it would be good if the board spent a little bit of time tonight giving us your thoughts. We don't think a transit stop within the project is appropriate. Um, we have, uh, since the preliminary plan, extended the sidewalk from the site down to, wait for it, Susan, Pygus Park. Yes. And which would, where a likely stop would occur if it did at all. So we've extended a sidewalk from the property to the public right-of-way of Pygus. And if, for example, the, the transit company in the town, you know, extended a route in this location, you know, it's really something we would support, but we wouldn't take responsibility to construct or anything like that. It's kind of our position on it. And the, the comment says, um, staff is happy to continue the discussion around transit. However, an actionable plan should be in place prior to final board action. We're not sure what that is. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow, but since we're here before you, tonight would be good to get you to weigh in on that. I'm going to ask because um, it is one of those things that I was going to ask, but it was one of those things that I know you're going to get together tomorrow. But anyway, the answer to your question is I'm not, I'm not surprised to hear that there will not be, like, we're not predicting to have a lot of use of mass transit by the people who are going to be living here. But I think that we don't know what's going to happen in the future. And we're, for example, in the middle of doing a new comprehensive plan. And mass transportation is going to be really good. So um, providing a place, a spot, whatever has to be done, and you can talk to the staff about what that might be in order to have a future opportunity to put something in there would be very, very important. And we wouldn't be asking you to build it, I don't think. But we would ask you to be part of the proposal, and it might include some financial assistance when it comes around to having to do it. I don't know. But it's very important, and I would like to think that even though you, your project is not going to have an immediate use for it, down the road at least, we don't know whether it will or not, but the area around there is going to, and you're beautifully located for that corner, which I think would become, in time, a hub.
So I was just kind of curious when I, in this facility when you come in, how steep it was and whether it's going to be very deep or whether it's going to have any kind of you know, passive you know, way to just kind of um, move around there if you want to enjoy it. Yeah, I would say very limited. Okay. I mean, it'll be sort of viewed as you walk uh, along the project and get glimpses of it between buildings um, and along open spaces, but uh, not immediately accessible to it. Um, two things, I guess, with respect to the pond. What ponds aren't necessarily the greatest way to go as far as stormwater management, both volume and quality or control? Our, con our, our concern, I just worry about mosquitoes, um, that kind of thing. But also, I wanted to just weigh in on the actionable transit plan. And I tend to agree with um, Ms. Oblis in that um, I believe that a connection to transit and public transportation is important. And I, I don't want us to underestimate the young families that you talked about moving in are more and more interested in, like, say, biking to work and um, reducing their. Um, Overall, you know, carbon footprint and, and the like, kind of a thing. So, so to me, the word actionable means steps forward to to, to put it in place, kind of a thing. So, so I would I would support Ms. Oblis and, and her proposal to keep the, the transit um, connection alive. Thank you. Thank you very much. Where was another story? Where was another story? Right. <laughs> okay. Any other? Um, Yes, thanks for your time. Okay. Uh, 
and then along came the uh, sprinkler system, which went through probably three different versions of how it was going to happen. What we finally decided was to basically treat each building independently, uh, which worked much better, but what it did, it made us have a <coughs> sprinkler room at the end of each one of these buildings. So we decided to, uh, on the four buildings, you'll see we've added these little six by six rooms that all face the parking mm -hmm. lot, which will uh, house the sprinkler equipment and pumps. Um, and if anything ever happened now, we only have to shut down one small building at a time instead of uh, a multiple uh, selection of units. Then at the same time, we were going through addressing, and the fire department wanted us to have some type of larger uh, site address on the building so they could easily uh, see what building they needed to go to. So that's where that square shape or diamond shape uh, on the end of each building came from. Where, And that's probably about a three by three plaque, if you will, where we would put the address of each building. So during a fire uh, or during an emergency, they could pull in and easily find which building they needed to go to. Um, and then with this board, the comment of faux or we might as well say fake windows. Um, came up and originally if uh, we talked about this I had always thought the heavier landscaping at on each end of the buildings facing the park being a part of the property and group one uh, in my mind was sufficient and was the way to go um, at the time the board didn't feel that way um, we knew, so we still got the heavier landscaping we've added that that three by three plaque which would have an address on it on the ends of the building uh, the sprinkler rooms are kind of a necessity, and now we've got the uh, fake windows on the second floor on the ends. Um, it, it, will, it will be pretty clear that they're fake. Um, you won't be kidding anybody. Um, so it's really talk to this board about which way they'd like to go. Uh, I prefer not to do those windows. Keep the heavy landscaping. If we do do the windows, I'd like to cut back on the landscaping. But that's where we are, and we can put on that. Okay, and out, out of the four buildings, and obviously the eight ends uh, that face, two of, two, only two ends out of the eight face Route 1. And you can see on this map, Route 1's about here. Uh, this is a 30 scale, so we're about 120 to 150 feet away from Route 1 with basically two rows of landscaping in that distance, one along uh, Route 1, and then one along the building uh, between the parking lot and the building. Yes, sir? Yep. Okay, so <laughs> While we were in the midst of the, pl of the uh, landscape plan, okay, as I look at the front page of the landscape plan, page L101, I, I don't have a landscape plan. Well, you don't have a landscape plan. Well, I was looking at uh, the buildings that you just mentioned, H1 and H2. Yep. Facing on to Route 1. Yes. And those are the ones, the only, one, the only ends that face on to the highway. Yes. So let's assume for the sake of discussion that we go back to the landscape idea and kill the full windows. Yep. Okay. We're still going to have a little thingy thingy there that's going to have a number on it, right? Correct. Right. Yep. But I can't figure out what the landscaping that we would replace those win replace those windows with would be. It says B here. But I don't see any B. Because I don't remember being very impressed with, you know me, I'm a landscape person. Because I thought I had landscaping any day with 10 windows. Well, I remember you giving my landscape architects a lot of compliments. So you like well, everything you did. I like this landscaping. So I can't, I just don't know. Yeah, and I'm going to guess that we didn't have anything that would certainly would cover the second floor completely. Well, here's the thing. If the landscaping comes two-thirds, half to two-thirds of the way up that wall, okay, that's what I remember I was talking about vines or lattices or something. What's the original? So that it would climb and hide some of that. 
Right, and there was two choices. One was attached to the building, and as a building owner, that's not something we no, wanted to do. That. And then two, we talked about setting up almost like a, a, a gate, if you will, with lattice work in the middle to let the vines. But by the time you looked at doing a structure big enough to, to really make a difference, it, it, it really started to okay. take I've, another I've, look. I've been spending a lot of time doing landscaping around my place this spring, and I, I've been living there for almost 30 years, and the managers used to amaze me that what looks really great up to year 15 suddenly becomes a real big, big problem around me. Yes. Out here for 30. So I really don't think that any kind of crawling, creeping, whatever vine is going to take care of it. I, really, I, I just don't imagine that it would. But there are things that could be planted in the, on this L101 original landscaping plan. And I'll bring it over and show it to you if you'd like. If you look at the back. And, and put large quantities of snow on the field. 
Is there a reason why we couldn't have something in here that says haul it away if we have one of those winter <coughs> just run out of space? We can. Can we do that? We certainly can. I think one of the issues um, that I that was identified was one of the snow storage areas was really a pretty heavily landscaped area and it seemed like that really wasn't conducive to pushing snow in its sort of traditional snow storage area type development. So, uh, but, but in reality, that, that would, if you were to have a landscaped area, it just be, it wouldn't get used as a snow storage. No matter what the plan said, it just wouldn't get used as one. I think that I would be happy if it just had something in there that says it if, if necessary, we put out of space, we will haul it away. Yeah, and that's, I, I would much it's prefer that. It's totally obvious to the casual observer that that's what you would do anyway, but, you know, we have that. Right, because obviously if it's a busy place between residents and uh, business owners and, and people shopping, you, you're not going to leave it there. You've got to haul it off-site so it continues to, to uh, you thrive. Would, you wouldn't leave it there. No. But other people might. I mean, I put them in a place to know you shouldn't do that, but if you don't have it written down that you can't do that, I will not be a happy person. But I'd so. rather have that condition than having to go babysit, you know, a load it down there. So, no, you got to put it here, but you can't put it there. And... Well, I will put in my one plea from this part down the board that it be worded something like that. Notice how specific that was. <laughs> You're talking about off-site removal. Off-site removal. And where you want to put it on site, because you're going to have enough people that are going to get really upset if it doesn't go where they want it to go, and then you just haul it off site. Is that too simple? I love it. Okay. Well, I thought we were just going to solve it for that, right? <laughs> um, and then the structural management, I'm going to leave again to the coastal and water management expert. So but my biggest concern was the windows and the fact that I don't care what you do with them. They, they just don't work for me. And um, I like the little idea of something where the number goes and then the landscape. Thank you very much. I'm all set up there. Thank you. Yeah, I, I looked at the uh, four windows and it looked to me like a little animated talking house in a child's book. That's all I could think of when I looked at it. Said, oh no, please. Uh, I think I'm, I'm with, with Susan that um, the, the diamond works. Uh, and a good landscape plan works uh, on all of the ends. Um, I don't want to keep beating a dead horse on this. I think you've been worked with us very carefully and consistently, and we've tried to come up with uh, alternatives, and uh, it's kind of back to the landscaping. I think it's a solution that would, certainly would be acceptable to me. And I appreciate the, the good faith effort you've made um, to provide us with alternatives even though I, uh, I was going to vote against them. Uh, so that's, uh, that satisfies me. Uh, I trust uh, Ms. Oglis on her knowledge of landscaping uh, and her, her wording on uh, some sort of uh, appropriate type of trees that would go in there. And again, I appreciate the work you've done with this. Thank you. Um, I actually have a question for Ms. Alice. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, is it just uh, on the plans on L401, it's just a deciduous tree at each corner. So if, if they're non deciduous trees, are we talking about a row there, or are you just saying replace the deciduous trees at the corners of each building kind of thing? Because I'm trying to get a feel for it. All right. I'm trying to find out here. Four buildings that are, would you point to them? Yeah. Up on the screen are the two that are closest to room one. Okay. The landscaping is very similar on the other two. Okay. Do you have a pointer, Jay, where you can point uh, to the two uh, trees? Can you see the yeah. little mousy guy? Those okay. two trees. So are you just saying two non deciduous trees, like replace it one for one, Susan, yes. on the plan? Yes. But, but, but non deciduous, because those are deciduous. That's what I was told, anyway. Cherry or apple or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I'm in agreement that I prefer landscaping over faux windows, and I think that's a reasonable solution. Um, I would agree with Ms. Oglis' proposal then for non deciduous trees. I would also 
agree with um, the proposal to put in writing that there will be off-site off -site winter snow storage. Um, and I just wanted to, I guess, before we leave snow storage too, did we address the fact that snow storage won't happen in stormwater management structures too? Did we talk about that? Right, well, yeah, we won't be pumping snow into the detention pond. So. Yeah, but um, I thought there were other structures too. Yeah. No. Um, okay, and so I know that the staff comments are dated June 5th, so I'm just wondering if um, staff's recommendations to calculate, um, to, to recalculate have been satisfied. I think I heard today that they were done. Angela just didn't have them, but I was told she now has them. Is that correct? I did receive an email this afternoon for... Um, what was around H5, it said on it. I haven't looked at it, but it looked like it was just one piece. So yeah. I just wanted to, I, I had Yeah, I, right. And I believe what had happened was all the buildings were done in that program. <coughs> the only one she got previously was the one for the restaurant, because that's right. what got approved. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so we did, they were all done. Yeah. And done in, in the same format the restaurant was, all the buildings were. But it's my understanding she now has H1 through 4 and H5. Um, if for some reason only H5 got sent, I'll, I'll make sure H1 through 4 gets sent to one. Um, is, and, and did the, uh, the reserve area for the two dumpsters, did that get taken care of as well? On the last page, staff comments. Um, is shown on the landscaping plan at the end of the Route 1 fronting parking. Yeah, and I have a feeling that was something that should have come off. Um, we're trying to set up something for the commercial buildings where it would be a private pickup instead of having, this is not a site really conducive to have, there's no good spot to have, especially the buildings closest to Rural. Okay. Um, so we're trying to do something uh, for those two buildings where it would be a uh, private pickup. Obviously, the two buildings, what? Well, we're not even dealing with the other side of the street, so oh, yeah. I'll wait till those come in for a site plan. So. Yeah. And, and so I guess I would just ask staff that if, if you all have what you need to, to move forward on this, or do you have any requests for us on this project? But, but we're not getting any site plans for the commercial buildings. Right, this so is, I think okay. what I've heard is they're going to come off this set of plans. They'll be by the set of plans, they'll come off this set of plans, and when they come back for the commercial, then we'll sort of take up the yeah. details of the Thanks. There's a lot of projects here tonight. So. <laughs> I'm all set. Thank all you. Set. Oh, great. Uh, how do you uh, find the, uh, the dumpster in the trash? Was it your project on the other side, uh, the crossing where you're going to have individual, uh, some sort of a community dumpster or something like that? Was it had a different project? No, the, the, uh, the regular residential area. In here? No, the, uh, the uh, dumpster. Yeah. Crossing. Dunson Crossing, yes. Yeah. So Dunson Crossing is a public pickup in the, in the residential section of Dunson Crossing. Yeah, the place that you're building now, all the residential. Yeah, that, the city picks that up. Oh, they do? Okay. Yeah. And so all the residents up there put their, their regular barrels up there just like you? Yeah, so what it, we worked out a deal with the town where uh, we signed a letter saying we would never hold the trash company liable for any damage to our private alleyways. And with that, they agreed to drive down the alleyways and pick up the trash can. Okay. So, because obviously you, there's really no good way to bring in Dunstan with the other ways to bring their trash cans out to the main road. But those were all public roads except for the other ways, and we got over that that uh, that issue with a, a basically a town truck or a public truck on a on a private right away. Okay. Are you still trying to work out something in this particular area? The the 12 units that <coughs> excuse me that we're looking at now uh, would be a private pickup. The 34 unit that you haven't seen yet, and because it looks like somebody else may be building that um, and owning that, uh, they've got something different in mind when that comes forward, and you'll see that one. But with the 12 units, there's really no great spot, so we just thought private pickup was the way to go. Okay. Um, I agree with uh, the other comments regarding the, uh, the windows, the fake windows, yeah. and uh, some sort of an screen. Yeah. Nice and flush all year long, you know. Yes. So, um, and I assume.
still all these other points that was they have to be resolved for the most part. Uh, and snow, there's no, there's no issue with snow removal on any of the uh, landscaping areas. Is that the concept? If the board is satisfied that snow is going to be removed on site, that's at the board's discretion okay. at this point. I think the, the snow storage areas that were shown, you know, aren't going to satisfy the site. I think that was the issue that was flagged, and so it's at this point at the board's discretion if you're satisfied. Okay. Um, I guess the last thing is the dog dogs. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's not a great way to make a six by six shed look good. Um, you know, right now it's a, uh, it's the, they don't match the front door of the building. Um, we would prefer not to have glass in the door, um, so it's a, it would be a six panel door um, that would swing inside to the unit for for access for the uh, sprinkler company or fire department. But that's obviously the reason why we put them towards the pocket park. We didn't want them facing Route 1. So all four face, face the pocket park. I would assume we would um, add some landscaping of our own just around that, just to kind of kill that view a little bit. Um, but it it's, has become an evil necessity. We have to do it. Um, you don't want anybody walking into it. <laughs> Do you have any other questions for us? No, um, I think that really covered all the areas. Um, um, obviously, I agree that the full windows was not a good idea. The landscape is a much better idea. The snow storage doing what uh, Susan said, having it where as needed, we would put it off site. Obviously, we're not going to do that for every two or three or four inch storm, but you know, obviously, a bigger storm than if it needs to be hauled off site, we'll haul it off site. Okay. Um, just my last question. Um, What's going on with your restaurant? We started that. That foundation is forward and we're moving forward with that. Okay. Good. Anything else from the board? Yeah. A motion. A draft motion. And conditions. Okay. Um, any objection to the motion? Okay. Um, having reviewed the evidence provided in the application, I move to approve the site plan application of Dunstan Properties LLC for the design and layout of the multifamily dwellings within the Dunstan Village subdivision with the condition that the plans be revised to address comments and staff and peer review memos, as well as revisions to the landscape plans in accordance with the board's deliberation. Final review and approval of the revised plan may be considered by the planning department. Yes. Second. Okay. Any uh, all those approval? I'd just like to comment that that is an excellent way to put conditions.
by way of overview for the board, uh, as part of uh, this parcel is actually part of the Scarborough Gallery subdivision. That's the subdivision that has many much bigger lots, such as the Walmart lot, Lowe's, and, and the like. Um, and this is a small sort of uh, corner lot to that subdivision along Muzzy Road that currently, or at the time the subdivision, had a small uh, residence on it. Um, and so the applicant was proposing to tear that structure down and to bring the use into performance as a commercial activity. Um, I sort of flatten the fact that this site is part of that overall subdivision to note that it will require some amended uh, state and potentially federal permitting. Um, so we just want to be sure the applicant is prepared to talk about that and um, that those should be uh, typically are anticipated as a prerequisite before our final board action on uh, new items. Um, as staff reviewed the application, we highlighted a couple of elements in terms of with regards to um, buffering parking lots. Um, and also, a number of our um, uh, discussion points really talk, speak to sort of the ability to potentially narrow down the uh, travel ways or the parking aisle um, to reduce impervious area um, for a host of different reasons that are uh, highlighted in, in the uh, materials, which I won't go through all of them, as I'm sure board and applicant members have had an opportunity to review. One other item that should be noted is the applicant did go to the Board of Appeals before coming to this board uh, for the ability for outdoor storage, the outdoor storage being the keeping of commercial vehicles. Uh, as the site is in the Offer Protection Overlay District, there are some uh, rules that need to apply. Um, and so we'll just look for the applicant to provide written evidence that they're meeting those. Um, and I think predominantly based on the review, it shouldn't be an issue, but certainly something we want to be sure that there's uh, evidence in the record of. Um, I think that sort of captures the overview and turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Okay, and I'll turn it over to the applicant. Very good. Uh, thank you, board members. Uh, my name is Dustin Rome. I'm a civil engineer um, here tonight. Uh, Travis Blake's also here. He's the applicant and the owner of the project. Um, I'm going to just talk briefly about some of the uh, site uh, components here, and uh, Travis has brought some, uh, some samples and uh, information as far as the building goes uh, to kind of help make a picture of uh, what you can expect to see for a, a reconstruction there. Um, so we've, we've been through um, a lot of the kind of uh, boilerplate items of, you know, working with the Portland Water District. We use the water service that was uh, uh, coming into the existing building, uh, working with the uh, sanitary district sewer connection there, um, working with CMP to, to bring power underground to the building. Um, what we're proposing is um, a, a 3,000 square foot building with 13 parking spaces. Um, we're looking to relocate the driveway um, a little bit on, further on the bottom of the page that you see there. Um, we've been uh, working with the DOT. Uh, we've already received our revised driveway entrance permit to relocate that driveway since it is outside of the uh, town's urban compact area. And um, we've also looked at uh, the, uh, some of the staff review comments in regard to uh, narrowing up some of the pavement areas, as Jay has indicated. So this plan that you see in front of you here tonight um, is uh, our uh, attempt to kind of address some of those questions. The board hasn't seen in their packets, but just to kind of explain this area here, we have previously shown as uh, 26 feet wide coming in for the parallel parking spaces. I think we do not have uh, parking on both sides of that aisle. It certainly is appropriate uh, to narrow that up and not worry about cars backing into other vehicles on the other side of the road right there. So uh, we did narrow that up on this plan. Um, the other uh, comment was in regard to the access drive, which goes around the uh, back of the building. Um, on the side there, we had uh, 28 feet from the building up to the edge of the pavement. And um, I do believe that we want to try and hold that outside the edge of the pavement just because we've got vehicles with trailers uh, coming around the corner of the building. And previously, we had that proposed pavement right up to the building. I do think we can narrow that up some to try to reduce the impervious area of the site. But I would like to try and keep that away uh, from the building so that we can uh, keep that maneuver, uh, maneuvering space around. Uh, for safety and to, just to protect the building. Um, we are kind of uh, pushing um, the extent of what we can develop around the back side of the building and also uh, in the dumpster area. And we 
did uh, look at that quite a bit um, at some other options, and we've we've already kind of um, moved some things around as far as parking spaces go to try and uh, get the 13 spaces that both uh, the ordinance requires and really uh, we feel are necessary based on the size of the fleet and the operations of the business. Um, so the retaining wall that's being proposed uh, behind the dumpsters is necessary to uh, just because we don't have the space really to grade uh, down to existing grade in those locations. Uh, there were some questions about the constructability of those uh, of retaining walls and where we are in a fill situation and not a cut. Um, I do feel confident that uh, we can get in there and prep that area of the site with some crushed stones on the blocks um, and maintain uh, uh, the activities on our site and certainly take care to do that seeing as we're basically uh, surrounded by the wetland conservation area uh, that was set aside on lot six and start with the gallery. Um, we had discussed initially about potentially uh, requesting a waiver for the uh, lighting for our metrics plan just because we were looking at the dominant wall pack lighting uh, with one full mountain lighting in the back of the building uh, near the dumpster, but we have been working um, with Swaney on a, um, some lighting plans for this project, so uh, we will be uh, providing that information to the board uh, with our, our revised submittals here uh, for the board's consideration and um, kind of balancing the uh, the wall pack and uh, pull on and lighting uh, amounts on the site. It's a small site, but we do want to maintain the, the required uh, lighting intensities uh, that the ordinance requires and, uh, for a safe site. So we do uh, anticipate probably adding one more light pole to the show in our previous submission. Uh, in moving the parking lot away from uh, Muzzy Road, we are going to be able to uh, have the, the uh, berm area in between the rain garden and uh, Muzzy Road, so we are going to be able to supplement the plantings that we were showing in our landscaping plan with some um, higher shrubs in between the trees on our property to help <coughs> screen the uh, parking lot area as required in the ordinance. So we'll certainly incorporate those uh, into our plans as well. Um, as Jay indicated, we are. Uh, Currently in the process of uh, getting our permits through the main DEP uh, and Army Corps of Engineers, they are reviewing the stormwater uh, quality and quantity standards um, under a stormwater permit, and they are also reviewing um, a thousand square feet of additional wetland impacts on the site um, as an amendment to the Tier Three application for the Sierra Gallery project. The, um, we did have the wetlands redelineated. So that we had um, accurate information as far as what those impacts were going to be. Um, we do have um, two rain gardens that we're going to be constructing on the site. Uh, one in the back corner and then one kind of parallel with the front parking area. Um, those are designed to meet the general standards of uh, DEP under their redevelopment uh, requirements. Uh, we have had a, a pre-submission meeting with DEP before submitting our information just to ensure that accurately including all the uh, correct calculations that they require. Um, I think that's a brief overview of the site components. Uh, what I'm going to do is have Travis come up and just talk a little bit about the building itself. Over there.
is actually a little higher than what this record shows. It's an 8 12 pitch. Um, these are 9 foot walls and 10 foot, 10 foot walls in the center, so it does have, you know, stands pretty tall compared to just the residential home. But, um, the siding is going to be James Hardy products, which is all the cement board siding. The main building will be shingles, which will have that kind of look that drawing like does. The main building will be in a, a gray, and then the barn board style that's going on in the warehouse next to it will be kind of an offsetting color. Then there's a shingle area up above on the dormer that will go back to. So it'll be kind of a mix of these two, these two colors in the front of the building. The shingle on the roof, again, this, this is, the purpose of this building is to be a showroom and administrative office for our business. So a lot of the products that we're using are premium products, higher end products that we are trying to showcase. So we have a skylight business, so around this building there's 16 skylights that are showing all the different options. Showing the different options, but also staying symmetrical. So we're not, there's not eight different skylights on the front of this building. It's a consistent look from the exterior um, for everyone to see. <coughs> I did, this just kind of, we took the building and this kind of shows what that barn, that barn board look, look like on here. The, Barn doors are non-operable. Those are just to break up a big long wall facing Muzzy Road. And they'll just have a look like this, but there's going to be stationary mounted in the siding. <clears throat> We're using all Anderson windows, which this just kind of depicts what those look like with the trim package. <clears throat> and this just shows the, the shingle. And like I said, all V-Lux skylights around the building. One question the staff had asked was what if I had a floor plan for the second floor of the warehouse. It's currently for expansion later um, when we need to move admin offices out of the showroom area. That's going to be a, a future use. Um, it's not being finished at this point. So that's the products. Over, um, you know, closer to the 
wetlands, kind of top of the page here. Um, try and kind of move everything over a little bit and try and capture a little bit of that driveway area. Um, really don't have a lot of space there without impacting more wetlands on the other side. Um, so what we've done is we've tried to locate um, high points on the site to capture as much of the lowest and previous area as we can. Um, that really relates to the back areas where people are going to be parking, um, as well as the front areas which we look at kind of the, the higher traffic. Um, as far as the side goes, that's really the only area um, that we're not capturing is that, that side drive by on coming in. Um, we're really grabbing everything else, um, providing the uh, water quality treatment. So everything does get a little bit magnified where, where you're looking at this. I mean, it's, it is a half acre site, not a lot of impervious area. We're, we're increasing by 6,000 square feet of impervious area on the entire site. I 6,000 impervious? I, I saw a new impervious of 9,700 square feet somewhere in here. I think it was in your stormwater management report. Okay, yeah, so. I think that number reflects the narrowing of the pavement and everything that we've done. Oh, okay. on this plan that's different from what we've All right, um, Shucks, I just had a question and it's escaped me. Oh, can you point? Okay, so the two, just point out where the bioretention cells are, I like the upper right hand corner. Yep, got this dark area yep. here. Yep. Okay. And so you have worked to reduce some impervious area just by the the, the the narrowing of the access road. Right. And we also had the original thing that we came and sat down with, uh, with Jay and Angela was to have that front access drive was actually much longer than we're showing it now. Yeah. So um, the so plan has evolved quite a bit over the last month as we've gone through the wetland delineations and we have a DPP in the town to really shrink this down. We spent a lot of time looking at the maneuverability and how we're going to get around the building. Um, it is a tight site. So um, there's, there's no way that you could like super elevate the, the roadway and lean it towards one side or anything like that because then is there is there any way to do that? Super elevate the access track to kind of pull all the water towards the building. Yeah, to have it go, no, not either towards the building or away from the building kind of a thing, but we're, we're running into setback issues there along the, right. the property line. Yep, and the whole site's basically been filled. So the building, um, we're already limited with just a four foot crawl space under the building, so by the time we help with our foundation drain, that kind of sets the finish floor of the building. We've got handicap ramps yeah. up front to deal with, so we have multiple elevation targets all the way around the building we're trying to hit, so. Yeah. So I guess I just want to mention the reason that you know I think I think it's important is last planning board we had probably I think three or four applicants in this watershed who have talked about um, the hydro modification that's happened in this watershed where um, the improved the increased impervious area and the lack of um, forest and taking away of the wetlands kind of thing has really impacted you know the 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 groundwater regime and, and flooding in general here. So um, this would be a really good place for some innovative measures kind of a thing. Um, and so just remind me what your what your um, peak, you're not increasing your peak flows at all. Right, so we're not requesting any waivers for flooding standards, okay. general standards, we're meeting all the, the requirements. Okay. And so, let me just check my, I think, I don't, I don't think I have much else. Yeah, um, the wonderful thing about sitting next to Robin is she asks, asks a lot of my questions. And uh, if you, as you responded to her answers, I got a lot of my questions answered. Um, we have had some issues raised of other folks going into the Mussey Road area with water table issues. And I had a question on the bulkhead that I saw, but I believe what I heard you say is it's a four foot crawl space. Uh, I also note that on the wooded current, um, they suggest, and it's on page two, the bottom of the underdrain soil filter should be at a minimum one foot above the seasonal high groundwater table. What is the seasonal high 
groundwater table now. Yeah, so we did actually make test bits of both of those uh, soil filters, and um, we actually uh, installed a liner in one of them. The other one was basically one, just one foot above uh, the front yard there. So um, it's, it's pretty evident to see because you basically have a roadside ditch on Muzzy Road. Uh, the other question that I had was around the barn door, which I couldn't figure out the purpose of, but you've responded to that, so thank you very much. Uh, and I had a question about the second floor, and I've got an answer to that. So I, the only other, uh, not, not so much a question, but a, an observation, is that, that by the standards, uh, all such things outside in, in the roof, such as skylights, really have to be uniform. Uh, so, as I understand it, that it essentially the inside might look different, but you're going to attempt to ensure that the outside is all of them is. Yeah, and I understand that you're doing this as a showcase. So, I am from the outside, um, looking at like that picture right there. So, the two on the, the left and the right are identical on the exterior. So this one, these two are identical skylights from the outside. Outside, You would have no idea driving by that there's going to be some different things about them. These two setups from the outside are symmetrical. So this looks identical to that from the outside. On the inside, this is a cathedral ceiling. These are flat ceilings. So we're showing different things on the inside of how that's represented. But from the exterior, this is very beautiful. I, uh, and as you as you go and uh, as you build the rest of the building, if you're adding more skylights, I just uh, suggest that you do take a look at the, the standards and make sure you, you keep going with that. I like the colors you've got. Um, I like the, the design. Uh, I understand a lot is difficult, uh, and I remain concerned about water table levels in, in that whole area. Uh, just. I have no more questions. Thank you. First of all, I just want to say thank you. I've been praying that something happens to that lot. To say that you're upgrading it is a minor understatement. Nice architecture, great product. Um, I'm really impressed. I just want, I, I trust the fact that um, these issues that are comments, staff comments are all doable and that you've done uh, your way to already make some of those, those um, changes. Um, <laughs> the only real question I have is not very important, but you know, I am known for landscaping. And this is, this was not done by a professional landscape artist, architect, right? Right. Okay, not that I care, but as I look at this landscape plan, Way out in the back, Can you, would you take that down and show, put the um, site plan back up? Okay, far left corner of that building. Okay, with me? Far left corner. Right here. No, that's right corner. Left corner. Yep, yeah, that's it. No, that's it. Is the highlight of your is of your landscaping? It is a dogwood tree. Dogwood is one of the most drop dead gorgeous trees that exist. Why would you put it way back there? I think you need to take, take a look at if you're willing to if you're willing to spread the buck to buy the plant, <laughs> you want to put it someplace where it can be really seen. Are you familiar with dogwood? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm not too sure exactly why it's way back there. Um, and I want to make sure I understood that business about because you narrowed the parking area. There's going to be room to put some more sh landscaping under these trees that are shown. Yeah, because before uh, a lot of the top of the firm was going to be out in the right way. Okay. So now we basically pulled it onto our property where we need that deal. Okay, so where I am seeing the uh, <coughs> red maple, there'll be something to augment that. Yes. Okay, this is just a um, sketch plan at this point, right? Am I correct? 
Well, it's, it's a formal submission. Um, yes. It, it staff's estimation is probably not quite ready for right. plan of board right. action, but that's at the board's discretion. I don't have any other questions. I mean, we're going to see what we will be seeing you again, and my concern with the stormwater management, I think, is going to be well better. And I'm just going to want to see what you're doing to augment the um, landscaping. And again, thank you for, for doing this for the town staff. One comment on the, on the landscaping piece. Mm -hmm. I do want to say that the building is to showcase to be our builders. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to be careful on like moving that tree in front of the building that I'm trying to showcase. So That's going to be in front of the building? Well, no, you were saying it should be moved over, and I just want to make sure. No, I'm not saying where it should go. Just okay. any old place at all where people can actually see it. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, do you want me to question? Basically, I agree with every public comment so far, and I think um, this is a real, I think the architecture on the main building looks perfect. Uh, I'm not sure what the, what the situation is with regard to this type of but I think it looks nice. Is the board satisfied? Uh, so, um, so the board satisfied? So, just on the access road, has the fire department, I mean, is that, can that be narrowed at all? Fire uh, so the, the fire department, well, actually, Angela, do you have an opportunity to speak with the fire department about narrowing that with them? Um, but certainly any resubmission, they'll, they'll have an opportunity okay. to look at. Because I would think you'd have no trucks larger than a fire truck trying to go around it. So it seems to me a fire truck is probably better than the trucks would probably be too. Um, I have no further comments. I have one, sure. one more. Yeah. Um, it's just regarding the groundwater table and potentially unsuitable soils kind of thing as you put the base material in for your driveway and and uh, parking and even ex, you know demolition and the like kind of thing. Um, I think it's really important that we understand um, one any deep watering plans that you might have for excavation that's going to where that deep watering is going to discharge to I think needs to be vetted with staff please especially in this area and um, just the the unsuitable soils as well knowing that there you may not want to put what's back down on the ground so um, I know normally it's good to keep the unsuitable soils on site but you may need to talk with staff about where those are going to go I would like to know that. Any further questions? Actually, just a point of clarification is actually about the um, materials on the structure. Um, it just wasn't clear based on the elevations provided if the uh, consideration to utilizing the materials that are proposed that you showed, which I think meet our standards typically, are also being, will be used in the sides and rear yes. of the building? Yes. Okay. You all said you have any, anything? Yeah, and I think uh, one of the comments was that I believe we have to actually make a formal written request about the uh, waiver that the landscape plan being produced by a landscape architect. So that's something that we can provide, but we can certainly hear your comments now. We were certainly uh, will make the revisions and take into consideration we talked about today. But I don't know if it's, uh, it's appropriate now to discuss that waiver, but we haven't made it formally yet. But I just want to make you aware that.
say that when you come back with um, the renderings, with the changes to the landscaping plan, if you could take something like this and then show us where the landscaping is going to go so that we can actually see it with the next to I'm having a hard time visualizing the road, the berm, not the berm, but the swale, the parking lot, and the building. So I kind of have to see that as opposed to just a sketch. So it's an elevation. You're sure talking about street view, if you will. Yes, that's what I'm asking. Thank you very much. Project, the second project would be in the back would be covering 
one of our play yards, which is a pavilion. And what it is is providing outdoor space for our employees and dogs that will be covered uh, instead of in the elements all the time, all four seasons, which have been for the past uh, 13 years right now. So uh, rain, snow, uh, this will give us the cover and the protection we need for the dogs that And um, I know there were some questions brought up, if I may proceed. Um, as far as the saying the expansion to the driveway, and, you know, we, the driveway itself was very uh, difficult for people pulling in pulling out. The amount of clients we have coming in in the morning and picking up in the afternoon, uh, the flow of traffic was very slow, very interesting. This is East End. The burn landscape. Uh, yes, there was a burn that moved, and um, I do have a dirt from the original burn that's sitting in the back of the Dutton cottage that I will personally move up. And my proposed plan, if, if you all agree to it, would be to put a 15 foot long burn with a 3 foot high and a 6 foot wide um, in the proposed area in front of the new parking area. As far as the uh, conditions of the existing building, we will continue to use the same material as far as T111. Our cottage walk, which is the color we have on the building, we'll continue to use that. And as far as the pavilion goes, we'll use the asphalt um, for the shoreline as well. In the back. The question, which was not on the plans, which I could see, were as far as I'm guessing the, uh, the back and the, the structure itself and how it's going to be supported. But there will be concrete piers that will be subsidized to the ground, uh, eight by eight with the pressure tree post. Uh, we will have the, uh, the three ply beams and bearings. They will be attached to the post with all the metal heel post attached to the piers with metal foot and post base. Uh, the truss roof system and the trusses to be attached to the beam with hurricane ties. The siding at the gables will match the Doggy Cog, which is adjacent. It will be set back 10 feet. Uh, we will continue as I said, use the asphalt shingles as this current structure right now. This is my first time, so hey. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> public comment. Is there anyone here from the audience that would like to give public comment on this item? Seeing none. Susan, would you like to have a go at this? Uh, by taking our um, staff comments and going through them in advance, um, I have very little to say because it sounds like you're willing to accept and take care of all of these items. Um, of course, the one that pleases me the most is that you're going to replace the burn. Yay. Um, I'm the green thumb of the government, so I do it all. And I'm going to challenge it. I don't have any problems. I mean, as long as the um, colors are the same and um, everybody's comfortable with the safety of this, um, what is it called? The pavilion. The pavilion. So I'm all set. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Now, I think uh, very much you, you responded to the, the questions that I had, and I, I've been looking at the plans for the, the new entry that you've set up here, and it does look as though, certainly as though you've had a much better flow here. So I can see, and I can see the need for it from the, from the old plans. Uh, I appreciate your willingness to uh, restore the berm and uh, to uh, provide um, positive responses to the staff comments and, and to work with us on this, so I have no questions. Likewise, I appreciate your willingness to work with town to establish the berm and have no further comments or questions. Thank you. I agree with uh, the comments so far. Um, I, I don't recall, did you mention?
straightforward request. Is there anyone here on the board that would like to ask questions of the applicant? We do have the opportunity for public comment, so we'll open that up real quick. Anyone like to speak about this? No? Close public comments. Thank you. Rachel, did you have Yeah, I, I, I note that um, on the Stantec um, narrative, you say that uh, a fence will be placed at the edge of the easement line. What? What kind of fence? What are you talking about? I believe we're, we're talking about a split rail thick fence. Um, just basically so after it's revegetated, it, it won't be disturbed by either maintenance uh, you know, around the building or foot traffic. It'll, it'll be allowed to regrow back into the original condition. Any other members have any questions? Contractor, the property owner came to us and said, Look what we've done. This made all the difference in the world. You know, it's like if we had found out by a resident or you know, some other way, and we had to go to get the owner and say, What's been happening? The idea that it would all be very different. So it's, it just is working out. It's working out fine. I have no problems with this. I do to appreciate <clears throat> for the record that. So, having reviewed the evidence provided in the application, I move to approve the site plan application of Maine Life Retirement Community, Inc. for the site plan amendment, which revises the location of the Arts Building at Piper Shores. All other elements of the approved site plan remain applicable. Any discussion? Second. Thanks. No, you need discussion. <laughs> discussion about the site. <clears throat> All in favor. Passes.
and we are here tonight to seek uh, preliminary subdivision approval uh, from you folks. And I just have five items that I wanted to touch base with, and hopefully they'll be very short. Uh, the first one is to uh, ask the board if they were inclined to do a sidewalk, sidewalk on this property, and if so, we'd like to eliminate set for that. The second is that we have received the staff in the peer review comments on the project. We've talked a little bit to staff uh, about those comments and we'll be following up in more detail with them. We don't see anything in those comments that is insurmountable, uh, and so we'll continue to work with uh, the folks in town on those items. Uh, we have submitted our stormwater application to the main Department of Environmental Protection. We have a stormwater permit uh, review that is required. We uh, have to meet at the state level under Chapter 500 the basic and the general standards. We don't have to meet the flooding standard, but we have provided that information uh, in accordance with the town's review requirements. And we had our initial meeting with the DEP. Their database showed that there may be a potential for a stream, which is located. Down in these fingers, located in this area here. We had a site visit with the DEP, the staff biologist, last Wednesday. They did identify a stream segment in this finger, as well as a portion of this finger. I'm not sure you can see it on the, the rendering, but there, it is identified on that rendering. Within 75 feet of that stream is the limit of jurisdiction under the DEP. We have our road outside of that, so there is no additional permitting that's necessary at the DEP level um, with regard to that. We're not crossing that stream segment uh, that's on the site. We have not met the threshold requirement for a wetland alteration permit. We are proposing 2,378 square feet of wetland impact, and that's right at that crossing, right there. That is below the 4,300 uh, 4, square foot uh, limit that would require a permit. So we don't have to have a permit from the state uh, with regard to the weapon crossing. We have crossed the narrowest point uh, of the roads. And we are continuing to work with the staff and uh, with the DEP to pursue the, the necessary permits and approvals of the comments. But we would like to uh, ask that you folks consider granting preliminary subdivision for tonight. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we have an opportunity for a public comment this evening. Is there anyone here that would like to speak? Come on up. You can just state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Leslie Benson, and my address is 167 Beechridge Road. Um, so, I wish that I would have been here at the um, preliminary review, I guess, to comment then, but I didn't know about it, so I'm here now. But um, we have land across the street and on the same side of the street um, as this proposed subdevelopment, and I just wanted to express some concerns that we have about it. Um, so, one of the things that I wanted to mention, and I don't know if it pertains exactly to this property or if it's just a general um, requirement, but for the conservation subdevelopment, something that struck us as strange is that they first have to lay out the property so that there are two acre lots because that's what's required in the um, rural farmland district typically. But then for the conservation subdevelopment, that gets condensed down so that they affect less of the natural area. Um, however, because of this property, if they were to lay out those two acre lots on the entire property, because of the wetlands and steep areas, they wouldn't actually be able to build as many two acre lots as were originally laid out. So to then when they get condensed, use that same number of lots, it felt kind of confusing that you know, if you had the 27 or 26 acre lot um, and you could get 13 two acre lots on that to then condense it down and still be putting 11 
or I'm not sure, but is it 10 or 11 that's being considered for this property? So there's 10 new lots. And new lots, and the two others that are being built are not considered part of the subdivision? One is not, one is part, it's already, it's part of the subdivision, but it was uh, developed prior to the review, so it needs to meet the conventional layout standards, okay. or it already does. It's uh -huh. already built on. Yeah, so I guess the concern is that it feels awfully dense. It feels like cramming a lot of houses into a smaller area, and the concern is that the areas that do remain that are being conserved, presumably, are actually mostly wetlands, so they're not that usable to us. Um, and having land on that street, we and using the property that's going to be built on for years to access cross-country ski trails and snowmobile trails and just have access to the woods and nature. And um, looking at this plan, it doesn't seem like that access is going to exist anymore. And that's a concern. Um, another concern is the increased traffic. Just looking at a map of the street, it seems like, I think right now we counted about 31 houses that are currently on the street. And this is adding 11 more houses to that, plus the one that was just constructed. So it's really dramatically increasing the percentage of houses on the street and traffic on the street as well. Um, and along with that, just the noise and light pollution that comes with that. It's right now a really beautiful street that still has a lot of its rural character in this meadow and wooded area is a lot of what contributes to that. Um, in the summertime, the meadow is filled with fireflies and it's incredibly beautiful. And it's sad to you know, think that all that is going to be gone and that it's going to be replaced with, um, I don't know if there are plans for street lights or porch lights, but I guess one thing that I'd be interested in seeing would be um, some sort of um, like dark sky, dark sky standards or something like that could be, that could be followed to try to decrease the light pollution that would come from all these new houses. Um, and yeah, I think what feels most important is preserving access to the woods and trails that exist as much as possible, um, being conscious of the light pollution, and just keeping as much buffering as possible amongst the lots. So those are the things that, if this is moving forward, would be important for me to see addressed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Somewhat safe where I go through there or not. 
I don't know where to bring up this stuff, so I'm doing it here. <laughs> Those are my concerns. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here that would like to make comment? Yeah, yeah, so uh, <clears throat> my name is uh, Robert Alton. I'm my his brother. He's a student to the Mexican My name is Robert Alton. I live at 167 Beach Ridge Road. Um, I also own a lot at 22 Dresser Road, um, where I tend to build a house sometime in the future. Um, my primary concerns are also access. Um, access to the trails for the crossing scheme. I've been walking those woods for 20 years. I don't want the back of my hand. Um, there's a cemetery on the lot there, um, where there are two stones that I see are listed on the, on the new plot plan. Um, I'm curious, what constitutes a cemetery? Is it the whole knoll, or is it just those two rocks? Because it seems like those those two lots are pretty valuable lots for the development, and it's pretty dependent on that whole knoll. So I don't know what, what a cemetery actually means in this case. Um, it's just kind of the rocks, kind of as you know, 30 or 40 foot area around the rocks. Um, that's one major concern. Um, yeah, so also maintaining access to those trails. The, it looks like lot one was expanded in this new plan from compared to the April 24th map. Um, I'm, I'm looking at trying to maintain a trail that would stay on open space um, and not be just in a swamp. Um, it's pretty important that for open space to be accessible. Um, so I'm curious if there are ways that we could make a trail that actually worked in all four seasons, and not just when it's all frozen. Um, yeah. Um, light is also a big concern of mine. Um, I know this new house was built just recently. Uh, it's like. 17 or 19 dresser road, and the lights are on all night. Like there's like seven lights across the front porch, and what was once a totally dark area of the street is now. I mean, you can't tell somebody turned those lights off, but you know, it's not it's not that nice. Um, but would there be plans for street lights at an intersection or anything like that? Yes. Yeah, so when we do the public comment part of this try to phrase your questions in kind of more general air. We try to avoid our uh, traditional back and forth for, All right, for the most part. But I, I, I would like to yeah. see no street lights. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I guess I guess that's that's the gist of it. thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And I hope you guys consider yourselves. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that could speak? My name is Deborah Bailey and I live at 32 Dessa Road. Um, my, I don't really have a concern, it's more of a question. Um, I am just curious on the two back lots that are in back of us, if we're actually going to see a house or it will be up towards the front of their road more. It's just a question. Um, because I know judge of distance, so I don't know how far back the, lot, the houses are going to go on these two particular lots down here. Or um, is it going to be enough of a buffer zone for us to not see the backyard or the back of the houses? Um, I know the one house we are going to get to see because it's right down below us, but just kind of curious about the other two. They are in these two, two lots right here. But that's me. And I just don't know how far back they're going to go. It's just a curiosity question. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that would like to make public comment? See, then I'll close the public comment. Yeah. Roger, did you have a... Yes, the first woman that spoke. You said you lived on Beach Ridge? So, are you, are you adjacent to any of this property right here? Well, so I'm... Can you come up to the microphone? Okay. Yep, please.
Hi. Um, so I'm partners with Robbie, and we're getting married this summer, and he owns the land on Dresser Road, and um, we intend to move there at some point in the future and spend a lot of time there. We are building gardens and landscaping, and um, so it's our future home, and it's close to our hearts. So that's why I'm commenting, and hopefully that's allowed. I, I, I'm tied to that road and that land. So thank you.
Um, last question, I think, was with regard to the cemetery. Uh, there is a burial area that was identified on the site, if you remember from our sketch plan presentation. Uh, the police department actually had some record information of a headstone uh, on the site. We actually went out, we located it, survey located on the property. There is what appears to be an old unmarked, what would look like a headstone. There's also a smaller stone very close to it, which would appear to be potentially a footstone. There's no identification, there's no sort of perimeter fencing around it or any, anything that really sort of identifies this as a, as a defined uh, burial area. So in looking at those two stones, we have provided for those to be located in that open space, which if you look right there in that strip that runs along, you can see it up on the, the plan there. That uh, those two stones are physically within the open space. They are not within a lot. We were also provided for a 25-foot wide no disturbance area around that area, which is in accordance with the state standards for a burial site. So we do have that uh, provided for uh, on the plan. And uh, the question with regard to visibility of the two lots, which I believe that would be lots 9 and 8, uh, there is a clear area on the back side of those lots existing right now uh, that is behind the Bailey property. We are proposing that the two homes be constructed relatively close uh, to our proposed internal road, but I can't guarantee that someone might not see a house uh, in that area, but we're not proposing build those houses that far back, but you might see them because it is already open on uh, a portion of the lot. Thank you very much. Uh, if I might just to add, add a little to what Ms. St. Clair just offered, um, in reference to sort of the lighting, we do have general, we have lighting, very defined lighting standards for commercial activities, but for residential, not so much, not for a single family home. Um, the town did recently adopt a good neighbor policy that does speak to not um, to some type of lighting uh, that's allowed or, or not permitted, uh, but generally your typical lighting that's on a porch on someone's residential home is not something that is regulated by the by the town. Um, and, and maybe Angela speak to what a typical requirement might be for uh, expectations for street lighting. On a road like this, if that's something that's required at the intersection, or yeah, I, I think yeah, it'd be very minimal. What we what we look at is intersections. Um, just in a lot of these like short little um, streets like this, it's more about the complaints of people trying to get in and out and the safety. It really comes out of safety. And I would, personally would maybe be looking for at the end of the street, but I would want police and fire to weigh in on that. Um, so I would I would just. And just the last piece, as Ms. St. Clair sort of talked about, in terms of the planning board's review of its subdivision, the single family uh, residential subdivision, the location of where the develop, where houses could be on the lots is not at the board's purview. Um, wherever the building envelope permits a house lot, a house, it could be within that building envelope. Um, so just so people are clear about moving forward, what the expectations could be. Typically, the houses may be pulled forward, but someone may have visions for moving the house towards the rear of one of these lots. I just want to be sure that that's uh, clear. And that was all I had. I think you should do a good job addressing a lot of the other ones. So, thank you. And I'm going to um, take a moment to ask either the applicant or perhaps one of the people who made comment to just clarify for me <clears throat> where roughly on this plan the trail system is located. More or less regular road is. Anyone that would mind stepping up and just kind of helping identify that on the air? So the trail more or less. Can you grab the handheld mic? Of course. We're recording for, for of public. Sorry. Um, so the trail more or less runs right along where this goes right here and then loops out along between lots four and five and then connects out on Corners Land and then out through Swinburne's property. So, you know, this is the route we take right here. Um, 
follows the path of the road all the way up to lot five. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, it seems like there could be potential to run run a trail along the side of lot one, oh, along to the back side of these properties, um, or along the back side of lot nine, up and up this way, connecting with the Tempego area. But I'm not sure what the best route would be. Thank you for.
I think under the subdivision requirement, the stormwater law and all uh, the down ordinance and also conservation easement kind of thing. Can you talk about what was preserved? Yep. Um, if you look at, let's look at the rendering up here on the screen, maybe it's a little bit easier for you to see. If you look at lot one, um, on the, it's north is sort of looking to the left on the drive. So on the southerly end of lot one, the blue areas there are wetland fingers that were delineated as wetlands. The lighter green that surround them is a 25 foot upland buffer. We met with the DEP last week on the site. They walked through that area and identified that there was a stream channel within that wetland and then on the finger between one and two on the downstream end they also identified a stream channel. So they've been out and looked at the delineation. They concur with that but they did add that there were two stream segments that were shown. Uh, on that. So we have added that to the plans. The 25 foot upland buffer is consistent around all of those fingers in that area. Our first crossing has been shifted over to the north to avoid impacting that wetland tip, which you see in blue. Which one to the left there, the north? If you look, I don't know, there we go, right there, right there. Oh, okay. okay? So that crossing there, there's a wetland finger that comes out into the site. We've shifted our road to the north in order to avoid crossing that wetland. And we maintain that upland area around the perimeter of that. So going up to the next one, there's a wetland band, that blue band, that crosses the entire site. There's no way to get to the back property without having some form of a wetland crossing. We selected the location for our roadway crossing at the very narrowest point. That is the only location on this entire project where we have a wetland impact in. That's about two notes here. That is 2,378 square feet. That is below the 4,300 square foot threshold for which a permit would be required. Again, if you look at that rendering, you'll see that there's the 25 foot upland buffer around all of those wetlands in that area. The darker green band that you see here, along here, along here, and out here are all part of the open space that is contiguous to that. Creates a buffer along the perimeter of the property and along the southern edge along here. And of that open space, I know that you said you had right, how many acres of open space? 13.69, it's 52% of the property. 52% of the property, and how much of that is wetland? Is it open space? Uh, upland area in the, in the, let's just see, let's see. So I guess what I'm getting at is all the open space, just the wetland. That's not true. If you look at the dark green, that's all upland in the, in the open space. And that to the left is where the burial site is, up in the knoll? No, the burial site is actually right there. And as I mentioned, we do have wetland areas up in here, again, with the 25 foot upland buffers. Okay. So at the end of the road there, that open space between those two larger wetlands. That's all open space. That's all highland. Yes, it is. Okay. It's actually pretty nice. So, um, how, how, um, how are your peak flows? Are you impacting your peak flows at all? We did a pre and post development calculation for the site. We have four points of analysis at discharge uh, locations leaving the site where in the post development we are below the pre development peaks at all four sites. Okay. Um, I guess I'm just, I'm still going back to that under drain soil filter, and if you don't have appropriate soils, I'm not wondering how it's going to work. Well, the underdrain soil filter is a filter. It doesn't infiltrate. Okay. It filters. So yeah, I gotcha. the, the premise is that you either line it or you have a material that is going to have a big exchange of groundwater. Um, okay. Can you 
can we um, how how open is the is the developer or owner to public access? Audrey Risner, Black West. There is no public access. So folks won't be able allowed to have public access. We don't we don't uh, anticipate any public access. There is open space land here that the homeowners will have access to. Uh -huh. uh, there is. I walked the site pretty heavily. There is somewhat of a trail network out that does connect to other properties that we don't right. control. But so we will, of those that will, that are there naturally will, will remain. Uh, the Homeowners Association would have the ability to grant access to others on a case by case basis. But as far as public access goes, this land does not have any public access. And it doesn't, there are no public areas to access by this. And um, I'm going to stop there. Yeah. If I could just follow up on just looking at the plans, I want to be just uh, was a little unclear, and as I look at the plans now, the, uh, the two under drain soil filters that are between sort of at the midpoint of the, of the road, the wetlands crossing area, are those to, within that 25 foot wetland buffer, or did you stay outside of the buffer and are you just showing sort of the in order to tie in to the crossing where the ditch line is in the road, we are within that buffer right here at the crossing. You can see graphically that's the that's the 25 foot buffer. You can see those tie back in there. Provide public access and provide a little parking. 
but it has to be the kind of place where it actually does not then bring in a real problem to the neighborhood because not people are driving out there in order to take advantage of the of public access. So I feel as if there's a lot about this that we really need to talk about more than we can do here tonight in terms of the open questions that still exist. <clears throat> And most of them are well, listed in the staff comments. And I don't think, again, that we need to go through all of these. Um, I am a little concerned that we, that we haven't really asked this question. Have we actually um, done an analysis of firm pools? Yes. Are there any firm pools? No. OK. Um, we asked the 24-foot standard. I think that my, basically, I do believe that this is one of those um, Good stuff is gone. Well, stuff is easy. It's open rolling hills and so on. And this stuff becomes really complicated. And every little turn becomes important. The people that we're working with here know how to do this. This is not their first time trying to do this in a way that's really professional. But I think that the first step is to take a, is to take a famous Rocky Rosbera sidewalk with the flags and the, you know, where do you get boots and all that kind of thing. And, um, and then we'll go back and, and talk a little more about the specifics that are on this list. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Rachel, would you like to? I would uh, like to echo uh, Susan's comments uh, about the site walk. I, I do feel the need to, to go out there and, and take a look at it. It's not not easy really getting a sense of the place from a, a one-dimensional map. Um, I do have a question on the open area around the, uh, the grave, uh, the cemetery. Is that 25 feet the full length? Is that the width, the full length of that space? The width of the common open space is, I believe, 20 feet wide, and then there's 25 feet, uh, no clearing in around the entire perimeter of that. So that encompasses what the side yard setbacks would be as well, so that that whole thing fits in that envelope. Okay, thank you. Uh, I may have some questions after site visit, but right now I think that's what I need. Thank you. Uh, regarding the burial site, I'm kind of curious where there's no markings on those stones. How do you know there's actually a human down there, no animal or something like that? Okay. The Historical Society has listed in there, thank you. Pardon me? The Scottish Historical Society also has listed in there, records. We're going to hold off on public comments on that. I, I could address, address that. Uh, he's correct. Uh, uh, Scott was recently about match that he was in charge of kind of knowing where all these sites are. And we were notified as soon as we let the town know that what our intentions were. Uh, Captain St. Pierre mm -hmm. notified us that on her list it, it said there was a burial site. And so we went out and identified. Uh, she told us roughly where she thought it was. We were able to find there are a couple of stones in the ground. There's one that really does look like a headstone with an empty right line. Uh, and then, as Nancy explained, this one looks like a footstone. And so we've, we've scoped that whole area out, looked all around, and tried to figure out, okay, are there any more stones? Uh, if, I can show it to you on the sidewalk, but you can see there, there's a place where there's some large trees um, that you know, maybe were allowed to grow at one time, and they cut their tree stumps. So I think, I think we know where the site is, but, but really there's no way for us to know really the entire size or who or what's buried there. Could be a person, it could be a horse. Okay. Uh, but so we've done our best to try to figure out where it is and, and try to work around it. I'm just kind of curious because I know there's a number of these type of sites in our town. There are, there are many. Uh, we actually had a site on uh, Memory Lane that, that was on a list that said there was a site there. We spent days trying to find it, never found it, have you know, since built houses and still haven't found it. Uh, we had another site in Scarborough that we it wasn't on the list, and we did find one. So uh, it, it can be in almost 50 years of business now. 
we all found one by accident. So we did that pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, my other question is probably more for staff because again, it, it shows my lack of understanding on, on the um, fire tank. This is I never in, in my term, you know, my time on the board here, I never come across this. Uh, I assume this is like a holding tank for water. And what's the justification for the fire department? They want this further up the dressing room. Right. The, the explanation I received was they wanted it a little further off Dresser Road for easier access to not be blocking a busier street. Mr. Chair, if I can just add to that, um, we did exchange a bit of emails with the fire department about that. And uh, as Jay had mentioned, uh, it is the location of the, the site itself. They just want to make some shifts to it. The concern is that during winter, uh, that sometimes snow banks make it difficult for them. There's functionally there's there are specifics as to what's the best location to protect uh, in a fire situation, providing access to the specifics for the truck, that type of thing. So we'll work with the fire department to make those adjustments. We had actually provided that location very similar to another uh, subdivision that we did in the area that we do have a fire tank in that location. So it's a matter of fine-tuning um, that I'm sure we can work out something with the department on that. And, and I, I think we should do a second one on this as well. Thank you, Roger. <coughs> um, and I'd like to just take a moment to echo um, what Susan said very well. Because here, uh, I think we all have a story of what we remember land used to be like. And she's right. Um, can't really stop what an owner wants to do with the property for the most part. But we can make sure it's done well and it's done right. And I think this board has done a very good job for the years I've been on it. Dotting the I's and crossing the T's and doing the best that we can, uh, working within the ordinance to be able to do that. Um, which, again, will be my second consecutive meeting, which will be my second one, which is it's a good opportunity for you guys to get involved in the government process. The comprehensive plan review is underway. Um, it's really that, that moment where we have a chance to see the vision for this town and try to codify it and help us do our jobs better that long range of view. So I encourage everyone here to get involved in that process. I'll probably keep harping on that until it's all over. Um, <clears throat> uh, from what I'm hearing here on the board tonight, it uh, sounds like we should be scheduling this at walk, and I, I don't believe I've heard enough support to uh, grant any type of preliminary approval this evening. Uh, we may have quite a few more questions, or maybe fewer questions after our site walk. I'm sure I'll work with Jay to schedule it with the board and the applicant for the board being out there. Sure. Um, I would also, I know you said you had a meeting with TEP on Thursday, and if for, for any reason um, town staff wanted to go with you to that meeting, would you please, um, would the invitation be okay? I'm um, sure so you send it up to, to Angela. We perhaps we spoke about the fact that we have a meeting. Thank you. And I have one more quick question. Is there anything that was reviewed in staff comments that causes you any concern going forward as far as what was kind of requested in here? No. Um, we've actually talked to Jay and to Angela today. There are some points of clarification, but there's nothing that's in our opinion. Thank you, guys. Thank you for those that are yeah. just a step to the microphone. I know it's not the easiest task and you're getting a little nervous, but that's stuff we need to hear, so I'm glad you're doing it. Thanks, Thank you. <clears throat> and we have our last item of the evening. At the request of the applicant, that item has been taken. Did they get tired? <laughs> <laughs> they did get tired when they just looked at the agenda. Yes. yes. Well, I have to. <laughs> so, we will move along to staff report. Um, yeah, there's two things I'd like to just report on briefly. 
want an update on the revised team of flood maps. I think a couple of months ago we mentioned that we received new plans and we were hearing that they were going to start the official review process in July. As things have happened over the last seven or eight years, that has now been moved. Uh, the most recent update is there's going to be a, a meeting in late August um, with sort of community staff before they start doing more public meetings. So um, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Uh, it's the best I wish I could do more for people, but that's we can only tell what we are told from people. So that's what I know today. Um, the other item I want to just update the board on is uh, working with the Long Range Planning Committee, we've been working on the Higgins Beach uh, Character Code uh, Zoning Update, or Audit as we were calling it. I think we informed you all of that. We had a very successful open house on Sunday, June 11th. Probably 20 to 50 residents showed up, uh, received some good feedback, and so uh, put in some very final uh, you know, dressing on the uh, uh, amendments that will be going forward to council in July and then coming to you for a public hearing uh, shortly thereafter, presumably the council moves ahead of first reading that is. Um, that's what I have. I think Angela might have an item. So. Yep, um, Pine Point Master Plan. We're having a, our second public meeting in July. It's July um, 18th, which is the Tuesday after the planning board meets at 6 p.m. at the um, Pine Point Fire Station. That's in board. At Pine Point itself, and um, we had one um, in, in the winter season because we had to get a PAX application in. So what we had promised the residents is that we were coming back in the middle of the summer to be able to hit um, um, those um, that are in for the summer months. And so everyone was encouraged to attend, and we'll have some updates on our East Grand Ave corridor project. Um, we're looking at some. Some concepts for that intersection at Pine Point and East Grand. So, any feedback is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Uh, Administrator Madden, report. I do not have any to report this. Correspondence. Planning Board comments. I have one. I want to thank Roger for stepping up tonight. Hey, Roger. Yeah. And filling in and making my my whole list of things to do really three times long. And I think I just heard a motion to adjourn. All in favor. I should let you in.